Hi everyone and welcome to the start of a brand new series here on Theme Park Worldwide. In this set of videos I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the future of various different theme parks. That's right, I'm going to be sharing my predictions and also wish lists for various different theme parks all around the world. Now how this series is going to work, I'm going to start off by talking about my predictions, the things that I think are very likely to happen at these different theme parks. I'm then going to move on to my wish lists, the things that I will put in if I was in charge at these theme parks. Now, I've never done anything quite like this before on the channel, and I thought, you know what, 2021 is the year to do something completely different with this. I've always liked to stick to the facts and uh, evidence, and of course, any plan applications and things that go in. With this, I'm going straight out there, um, sitting down in front of the camera and sharing my thoughts on the parks. It's something that a lot of you have wanted to hear, um, my thoughts on the future, and that is exactly what I'm going to be doing in this series. So here we go. I'm going to start off this series by talking about a theme park that is very close to my heart. I worked there for a number of years. It's my local park and also it kind of made me the theme park enthusiast that I am today. It is of course Alton Towers. Now I'm going to start off by talking about one of the biggest areas at the park for families. Now CBeebies Land opened back in 2014 and it took over Storybook Land and the Farmyard so it combined two areas together and made one all based on popular CBeebies programs that of course are on the TV. Now, CBeebies Land has proven to be very popular for Alton Towers. Since it opened in 2014, they've actually added a lot of new rides into the area. They've added some new shows in there. And along with that as well, they also built the CBeebies Hotel. So um, it's one of them things for Alton Towers that seems to be going really well. I'm predicting now uh, this is highly likely to happen. We're going to see constant investment still in CBeebies Land. Of course, that's if it's going to be still remaining on TV as a channel and all the programs are still going to be coming out. If that changes, then obviously I'd imagine the area would. Um, I don't think Alton Towers would be very happy about that. But, um, you know, with it being so popular for them with the families. But yeah, definitely putting it out there now. I think we're going to see more investments in CBeebies Land. Um, and I think possibly another couple of flat rides going into there. Possibly a small dog park ride would work really well in that area as well and you might be thinking well in terms of the space what they've got for CBeebies land um, they've not really got that much room now a lot of it's built on and you would be correct it's pretty much landlocked now in that bottom right corner of Alton Towers so that moves me on to my next point that I want to make about something else that I think is likely to happen in the future of Alton Towers and that is the removal of Spinball Whizzer. Now this originally opened in 2004 it was also known as Sonic Spinball for a period of time but it's gone back to its original name and theme now. Um, this is right next to CBeebies Land and there's a very temporary looking wall between uh, Spinball Whizzer and also the Octonauts roller coaster. That could easily be removed and that area could all form part of CBeebies Land. The beauty of doing that is that it's a quite a large space and it's also right next to the area. There's hardly anything to do. In fact, um, back when it used to be Adventureland, that wall didn't exist and it was all one part of the area. So they could easily just take that wall down. It's already got um, a surface in there to walk on. Of course, it's already paved. Um, so there wouldn't be too much to do and they could easily put two or three new rides for CBeebies Land on there. So that's again what I think is going to happen uh, in regards to CBeebies Land and also the removal of Spinball Whizzer. Uh, more about that, I mean you might be thinking, hang on a minute, what, why Spinball Whizzer? Now when it was put in in 2004 it was a fantastic ride but it was more about to increase attendance at the time. There was two back-to-back -back coaster years, uh, Spinball Whizzer 2004, Rita 2005. They were very quick installations and at the time Alton Towers was through the period of being sold so they wanted to of course boost the attendance. Um, in terms of reliability and throughput Spinball Wizard is pretty low on both of those and um, so I imagine no matter what even if CBeebies wasn't to be expanded Spinball is probably going to be removed at some point in the near future. Um, of course with everything that's gone on with the virus that started last year things could change however I still think that Spinball is up for the chop at some point in the next couple of years. Now that makes me move on to the next thing about what I think is going to happen at Alton Towers and that's re the removal of what is the oldest ride there now and that is the Blade. Now um, this is a standard pirate ship that's located opposite Nemesis and Galactica in the Forbidden Valley themed area of the park. This has been rumoured to be going for quite a few years now and it just keeps coming back. However you look at this ride in some more detail and uh, yeah you know it's very rusty and it's not part of the theme in either like you know Nemesis they paint the rust on. That isn't the case with 
with the blade. Um, you know, it is an old ride. Yes, it has had some paintwork and some refurbishments, but I do think the time will come in the next couple of years where Blade um, will be removed from the park and it'll be time to say goodbye. Now, that will, of course, leave quite a big space in Forbidden Valley because Ripsaw was removed, the Huss Top Spin, and if Blade goes, that's a big area. Now, that could be a potential roller coaster site or what I would prefer, especially as the fact there's already two coasters in the area, would be two flat rides on there. Two brand new flat rides, maybe one family, one thrill, just to fit into Forbidden Valley. And I, I do think Alton Towers are going to do something on that site. Um, they are struggling for space now at Alton Towers. You might be thinking, blimey, it's a 500-acre theme park resort, um, but you've got to bear in mind, Alton Towers can only build on certain areas. They have a lot of issues with planning permission there as well, and they can't build above the tree height either because of low Local guidelines. So, um, you know, Alton Towers, in terms of room, what they've got and what isn't already taken up, you know, that is a, a good potential space, what they could use for something in the future. So, yeah, possible removal of Blade and a couple of new flat rides on there. I think that will happen at some point. It's just how long we have to wait for that. We know that Merlin don't particularly like putting in new flat rides. However, look at what's happening down at Chessington um, for this year. The, obviously, they've got the new um, drop tower going in, and of course, they've replaced the pirate ship with a new one as well. So, Fingers crossed we might see some flat ride investment at Alton Towers. Now, uh, on to the next thing that I think is going to happen um, in the next few years. This is a, a pretty much definite for me. It's a monorail refurbishment. Now, the Alton Towers monorail dates back to the mid-80s. And when it was all set up, it was a brilliant idea to take you on this monorail ride from the car parks through the theme park, really build up the anticipation. Um, and then you arrive at Tower Street. You walk down and see the towers and it is beautiful. And it's a fantastic way to welcome you to the park. However, the monorail is very dated. Back in 2000, 2008, they did a refurbishment of the monorail um, that involved putting in a new audio system. They also replaced all the benches, um, all the seating inside the trains. They used to have comfy seats actually, but then they put the wooden benches in. Much easier to maintain and clean though. And then they also did something that at the time was probably a good idea. However, it soon um, had a negative impact on the monorail, in my opinion. And that was putting in the vinyl windows. Now, from off-ride, it looks fantastic and they still look pretty decent to this day. Bear in mind, they've been on there for about 11, 12 years now. But, um, you know, you look at them in more detail and when you're actually sat on the monorail, you can hardly see out the windows now. Like, literally, they are that messy. They've got a couple of options with that. They could either just replace the windows and keep the pattern on the outside, but it also means that the windows, um, you know, there's nothing on there so you can see through. Or what I think is more likely to happen is a huge overhaul of the monorail. It's an old attraction. A lot of people don't realize this, but it wasn't actually built for Alton Towers. It was built for an expo in Canada and then Alton Towers bought it and put it in. Um, so yeah, you know, it's due a refurbishment. They're still the original trains. There's not that many of them left in comparison now. They used to have quite a few more trains um, on the monorail. They've been using parts off that to fix these ones for quite a few years. I think it's coming, a monorail refurbishment. People have said, oh, they might remove the monorail I don't think they can do that I just don't think they would I mean Alton Towers they're really trying to grow the resort. They've put in all that new accommodation all down this end. The theme park entrance is down here. I just think the monorail will get refurbished, possibly new trains, some upgrades to the track and the stations. I think that will come at some point in the next few years. Um, and then we're going to move on to my final prediction that I think is definitely going to happen. Um, and this is all about Nemesis. Now, of course, Nemesis opened a Secret Weapon 3 back in 1994. An absolutely fantastic roller coaster. It's a B&M inverted coaster. In fact, I've got this nice classic poster up behind me uh, that I've got. And you know what? I love Nemesis to bits. However, um, a lot of people have said this, especially last year throughout the 2020 season. In some parts of the ride, it was starting to feel a little bit rough. Now, you know, for me, I still thought, you know what? Yes, it's mostly smooth, but there's a few jolts in places. You then got to think, while well, a roller coaster, it's not designed to be ridiculously smooth. It is a roller coaster after all. It's got to be thrilling. However, you've got to look at this in terms of where Nemesis is situated. That used to be, prior to 1994, a flat car park. Because of the reasons that I mentioned earlier with planning applications and not being able to build above the tree heights, they had to actually dig right down to build Nemesis. However, 
you know, 30 years on, um, you know, nearly now for Nemesis. And unfortunately, Nemesis is starting to become a little bit rattly in places. And I imagine it's partially due to the foundations um, of the ride and the site on there. The fact that the track is now getting old. Um, you know, what happens when rides start to get old? You get fractures starting to appear in the track. Um, you know, so it wouldn't surprise me if that's been the case with Nemesis um, in the past few years. Still perfectly safe because, of course, they do the routine maintenance and they check these rides every single day and every winter the fully stripped back like right now that ride will be stripped back it'll be having a big overhaul every year but what i'm talking about here is a massive refurbishment of nemesis possibly a full track replacement maybe new trains on there as well uh, if they're replacing the track i'm certain that they would replace the trains and also i think they'd actually do some theming enhancements around nemesis because as much as the landscaping around it is great in terms of theming other than the station building which is the monster there's not loads of theming around so maybe we'd, we could see them add some more theming around the ride if they did, were to do this from a marketing point of view um, I, I think they'd do something. If Alton Towers were spending that much money on completely refurbishing Nemesis, um, then I think they would want to try and, um, you know, ramp it up to be like the next generation Nemesis and maybe change some certain bits, reimagine the soundtrack, that sort of thing, which you are playing with history if Alton Towers did that. However, I do think they'd go more down that route rather than removing it entirely. I just don't think we're going to see Nemesis removed and it's gone from Alton Towers for good. I don't think they'd do that. It's a staple ride. It's still the ride at Alton Towers for a lot of people, me included. Um, so I do think that, um, yeah, that they are going to keep Nemesis, but it will have a big refurbishment. So there we go. There are my predictions on what I think is pretty much guaranteed from, you know, no sort of insider's knowledge. That's just me thinking about it all, but also being realistic about it. I'm now going to go on to my wish list for Alton Towers. So things that I would do if I was in charge, basically, and what I would love to see, my dreams for Alton Towers. So starting off with an extensive refurbishment, I'm modernization of Tower Street. Don't get me wrong, when Tower Street was built in the 80s, it looked incredible. However, as of 2021, the buildings are painted in these bright colors. The frog fountains barely work. Um, a lot of the buildings, you know, they're stuck in the 80s. It's time for Alton Towers to modernize the entrance, in my opinion. I'd love to see, um, as much as the frog fountains are classic, you know, I'd love to see them removed and then maybe brought back in a new form with some new, bigger fountains, uh, more grand fountain show on Tower Street. Possibly some Something like the Pleasure Beach Fountain Show, actually, something like that. Along with that as well, um, you know, I'd like to see on the right hand side of Tower Street getting all them buildings open. Um, somebody made a decision back in the 90s to actually put a lot of the offices inside there, um, which in my opinion was a bad move because you've got all that potential retail space, restaurant space right there on the main entrance. Why is it not being used for guests? It really annoys me and it did when I worked there actually. You've got Towers Trading on the left um, and then Corner Coffee on the right and the box office and that's it. Three functioning buildings. Um, so, you know, it'd be nice to see them open them all up again like they used to be as, as more buildings. Moving on with that, then in terms of coaster investments. Now, I've said this in the vlogs. I'll go into a bit more detail now. I don't really think Alton Towers needs much more in terms of roller coasters at the moment. There's a lot of other things that I think need sorting out at Alton Alton Towers before they thought about roller coasters. However, I couldn't really film a future of Alton Towers video without sharing my dream roller coaster, what I would put in there now. Bear in mind, Alton Towers has done a lot of world's firsts over the years and they've got some incredible rides and they've got a great mix. Now they've got a wooden coaster, you know, they've ticked that one off. And if I was filming this video five years ago, I would be saying now a wooden coaster at Alton Towers. They've got one of them now, so I can't say that. However, what I am going to say is that I would love to see a second one wooden coaster. No, I'm joking, joking. Being realistic still. Uh, a water coaster would be fantastic to go in. I'd love to see something a bit like Poseidon at Europa Park, um, a Mack water coaster, maybe two lift hills, very heavily themed as part of a new area. The park's lacking a log flume now because of course uh, the, the flume was removed and Wicker Man was put onto that location. Uh, so I'd love to see a water coaster. Good thing about them as well is that a lot of people still ride them in like March, April, um, September, October, the colder months, because you don't get too wet on a water coaster. There's videos of Poseidon and Atlantica at Europa Park and lots of other fantastic water coasters here on the channel. So check them out if you're not seeing them. But yeah, I just think a water coaster would be perfect. In terms of where it should be located, possibly a new area on the car park behind Galactica. That's been rumored as a potential coaster site for a few years. I mentioned earlier, 
earlier about Forbidden Valley, possibly there, but I'd rather it not be there. If I was to pick my dream place for it, it'd be on a new site. And also you've got Coaster Corner, the old area at the back of Cloud Cuckoo Land and what's going to, of course, be turned into the world of David Walliams um, that we know is already opening this year. And then, yeah, you've got a big area behind there for a coaster where the Alton Mouse and other rides used to be. So, yeah, that's what I'd like to see coaster-wise, a water coaster for me. Um, along with that, a complete refurbishment of Jewel, the Haunted House Strikes Back. Jewel, I've got a love-hate relationship with it. I think it's a great ride system. I think the facade looks fantastic. And even the queue line walking through the forest and then inside is great. Then you get on the ride and it's just a mix now of um, horrible UV lighting that does not work. You can see the effects because they've replaced stuff with LED. I'm all about being energy efficient, but there's ways to do it. Disney do it right. Alton Towers with Jewel just have not got it right at all with the lighting in there. It needs a complete overhaul. For me, it would be removing all of the targets, removing all the guns, turn it more into a classic ghost train, but keeping the ride system and the layouts, but completely redoing the scenes. I'd go as far to say as literally, other than keep it, the ride system and the shell of the building, everything else, all the walls, all the internal stuff, rip it all out and start again, because I think that's what Jewel needs. Alton Towers have done a lot of what would I would call bodging up over the past few years of Jewel. Uh, the Trommel hasn't worked for many years now, the, the spinning tunnel, of course, the vortex. Um, you know, the there's things in there that just haven't worked for a long time and it really bugs me when I ride Jewel. Things that I do like what they've done though is the new soundtrack in there. That's better than the old one, but the, you know, that ride's got so much more potential. So for me, it would be a complete refurbishment of Jewel. The Haunted House Strikes Back. Right then, so Alton Towers has got a dark ride located up in Forbidden Valley that's just been sat there now for many years, not being used as a ride, but they used it as a scare maze, Project 42. That is, of course, the ride Nemesis Subterra. It was based on the backstory of Nemesis. It opened in 2012, um, and then it only lasted until 2015. From what I remember, it was like a £6 million investment by Alton Towers to last the best part of three years. Now, I would love to see them if they're going to do this Nemesis refurbishment, then bring back Nemesis Subterra and have it as kind of, you know, the story behind it, but change it up a little bit, you know, modernize it, possibly even have it open whilst they're doing the work on Nemesis. Because if they were doing a Nemesis retract, I'd imagine it would take place throughout a full year, not just a winter season. They could open Subterra um, whilst they're doing the work. And then, of course, you kind of revitalize that attraction as well you know that's that's what i would do and then at the end of the nemesis refurb you've got two really fresh rides based around your most popular and famous coaster at the park so that's what i would do um with nemesis of terror i might have to film a future video and go more into detail about what i would do with that um because i feel like i could do a whole video about what i would change on subterra what i liked what i didn't like and what the park could do to make it a better attraction Finally then, uh, the thing I'm going to talk about on my wish list for Alton Towers future is entertainment. You know me, I love shows and entertainment, and this is something that Alton Towers has kind of been like this with over the years. Now, let's go back to the early 2000s and the absolutely fantastic Peter Rabbit on Ice. Of course, that launched um, back in the 90s, ran for many years. They then had more ice shows that replaced that, and they were all fantastic. Through until winter 2006, they did a pantomime on ice from what I remember. That was the last one. And that was it for the ice show. These were big productions. It used to be located um, where the CBB's Big Fun Showtime Arena is now. Big ice arena. It had a cast of maybe 25 to 30 performers. Lots of them were skaters. But you think about the bigger scale of it. There was lighting technicians. There was people on the follow spots in the ceiling. Um, lots of big acts on there, uh, which was brilliant. I'd love to see a new entertainment venue. And where should it be built? I would love to see it built actually in Forbidden Valley or possibly um, along with a new coaster investment the water coaster on the site behind Galactica on the car park because if they did it there they could utilize it in the evening as well they could open it for shows for hotel guests on a night they could do a ticketed theater show uh, they've got the roller coaster restaurant that's already there possibly some rides could open on a night and have Forbidden Valley as more of a an entertainment district on an evening uh, but in general, more entertainment. I do like what we've, we had last year with Oktoberfest, Scarefest. Um, you know, there were fantastic events. I was really hoping for fireworks, but it couldn't go ahead, obviously, because of the virus. 
but um, let's hope for 2021. Let's hope for this year's events that they're going to be fantastic. So there we go. That is it. We have got my predictions and also my wish list for the future of Alton Towers. I really hope that you've enjoyed this style of video and I also want to make it really interactive. I really want to read your comments and see what you guys think to the future of Alton Towers. Do you agree with any of my opinions? Do you think they're a load of rubbish? Do you have all your own? I would love to know. So let me know down below in the video comments. I'll be reading them all. I reply to lots of comments too and it's always nice to see what you guys think. So what's the feature of Alton Towers? Comment down below and you kind of put it if you want like your predictions and wish lists kind of like how I've done it with this video and I'll be back with a new one of these in just a few days time where I'm going to be talking all about my absolutely favourite park here in the UK. I love it a bit. It's Blackpool Pleasure Beach. So I'll be back very soon and that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. See you soon.